Okay, so I'm going to do this video, Vegan Banana, um, who asked me the question a couple of weeks ago, uh, why after being a vegan for nine years did I choose to um, go back to eating meat, which requires the killing of an animal? You know, why did I do that rather than just um, choosing to eat an animal byproduct like eggs, which would be less unethical or more ethical than actually requiring the killing of an animal and eating its meat. And, uh, you know, I said, well, you know what, that's a good question. I will do a video on that. And I never did because, well, you know, I've been really busy working in landscaping uh, long days. And, you know, this summer it's been extremely hot here in Ontario. Let me take my glasses off for a second. It's been extremely hot here in Ontario. And, um, you know, some days with the humidity factor, it's been over 100 degrees. We can't take days off. The job has to be done. And it's brutally hard work. Uh, so, yeah, I get home. I have enough energy to take a shower, put some dinner together, and uh, watch a couple of videos. And by then, I'm ready to crash, more or less. So, anyways, I'm not making any excuses here. But um, Vegan Banana reminded me in a comment yesterday, hey, where's the video? You promised it. So I'm doing it now. Okay, here's the deal. The way the question was uh, presented was, it was definitely coming from a particular perspective. And that's the vegan perspective. Like, you know, why, why would you do something unethical, like eating an animal product, which requires the killing of the animal? I don't make those distinctions. That's a vegan perspective that there is an ethical difference between eating plant life to eating animal life or uh, eating animal um, derivatives like eggs or dairy or something like that. I have, no dis eth I have no ethical distinction between those kinds of foods that are available for humans. So I'm coming from a different perspective and, you know, from a evolutionary perspective point of view, I believe that as humans, we are omnivores and we're capable of eating pretty much anything. Um, some things are healthier than others and or uh, if you eat too much of one kind of food, it can be unhealthy for you. But we are basically omnivores and if you look at civilizations in the world and the ones that have done the best in terms of health and longevity, uh, it, 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 it is those civilizations that, it is those civilizations, is that correct? Or, yeah, that's correct. It is those civilizations that um, follow a plant-based omnivorous diet where their diet is predominantly plant-based with a little bit of meat. And you know what? I actually met uh, a landscaper. He was, there was another landscape company working across the street from where we were working. And this guy, he's 72 years old, and he's still working in landscaping, you know, pushing a wheelbarrow full of dirt kind of thing and doing dig outs and all of that. 72 years old, he smokes two packs of cigarettes a day. He makes his own wine, so he's a regular wine drinker. Um, and, but then I asked him, okay, you know, this is kind of, and yet you're still healthy and you're working and everything like that. Now, he doesn't look like an athlete. He doesn't have six-pack abs. And he, he looks his age. He looks like he's in his early 70s or late 60s. But um, very strong man. And um, I asked him, how much meat do you eat? And he says, very little. He says, I eat a lot of pasta. I guess he's Italian, right? And a lot of vegetables, a lot of fruit, but very little meat. And... I thought that's really interesting. Um, but anyway, so that's, you know, I eat meat once a week. I think it's important nutritionally for long-term health. And uh, I'm sticking to my guns on that. And why meat rather than eggs? Because there's just, I, I find the meat that I'm eating, the venison, the, um, the wild sockeye, the rainbow trout, and even duck, I've had duck. I just think... These are nutritionally compact um, food sources, which have, you know, the nutrients that I want are ready and available for my body to absorb. Um, so that's, you know, and 
I like I like it better than eggs. I do eat eggs sometimes, but not that often. Cheese, I have really no interest in. Um, I mean, I shouldn't say that. On rare occasions, I'll have I'll have cheese as well. The other perspective I'm coming from here is a Pauline Christian perspective, and th that's basically the New Testament idea that, you know, breaking away from the Judaic tradition where there was a lot of restrictions about what you can and cannot eat or how it, the food should be prepared. Um, the, the Apostle Paul, basically, his, you know, mission was to bring Christianity beyond Judaism and out into the world. And so he did not want to put food restrictions on different cultures. So he promoted the idea that um, if the food is eaten, Eaten, if, if you eat the food with gratitude, giving thanks to God, all foods are good um, as far as he was concerned. Food itself did not make a person clean or unclean. And I hold that perspective too. So I don't have this ethical differentiation between different kinds of foods that some food will make me less pure than others. Some food to eat is immoral. I don't have that distinction at all. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I can see, I can almost anticipate right now that there are some vegans out there ready to um, challenge me with, with the question, you know, okay, if you're willing to kill and eat another species, why then is it not okay to eat a human? And that's a very good question. That's typically what the kind of question you would get from an anti-speciesist that follows the doctrine of uh, Peter Singer. Um, yeah, why not? Why is it not okay to eat my fellow human beings? I think on a practical level, it's not okay because it's counterproductive. It, it, it's, it just wouldn't be productive for humans to eat each other. It would be a stupid thing as a species to do. You know, for me to go over and decide, hey, my neighbor looks like he would taste really good barbecued, and then one night go over, clobber him over the head, and then butcher him up and eat him. I'm setting myself up for the possibility of my neighbor coming over to my place one night and killing me for food. So that's counterproductive. You know what I mean? Um, it's like eating my own arm. Yeah, there might be a short term nutritional benefit to that, but long term, I think I would run out of arms to eat. Um, now, in a case of an emergency, you know, where your, your plane has crashed and you're out of food sources and there's like dead human beings there ready in a, to be eaten, um, yeah, I, I mean, you got to do what you got to do to survive. But those are so extreme. Uh, those are scenarios that very few of us will ever find ourselves in. Um, another reason why I wouldn't... I, I would not approve of eating my fellow human being is because I believe that humans are, unlike all other species in the world, are created in the image of God. And so that puts us in a different place altogether. Um, you know, we are not just animals, but we have the divine in us. We are created in God's image. So on one level, we are gods with a small g. Yes, we are biologically animals as well, but there's something else about us that distinguishes us from the rest of all other living creatures. We are god imagers. Now, that puts a great responsibility upon us as well. Um, I'm disappointed with those who, you know, would use the 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 tradition the the Christian tradition to justify eating anything uh, to the point of being irresponsible about how you eat and I see a lot of that in Christianity uh, for me it's it puts on you know I look at it as as um, believers in the divine in a creator in a ultimate designer that. Um, we, if we believe that we are in the, the image of God, we have an awesome responsibility on, on how we treat the rest of creation. It doesn't give us license to be able to go out and um, 
basically create havoc in the world, you know, pollute our waters, our airs, destroy our environment, and just treat other species any way that we feel suitable for our own selfish ends. That is wrong. Factory farming is wrong. Um, so yeah, I, and this is why I'm saying, okay, I see the importance as a biological being to eat other animals for specific nutritional reasons. Um, but I also have come to the conclusion that it's not necessary to eat animals on a daily basis in order to get the, nutri the nutrition that I believe I need. And it's, uh, and how animals are treated while they're alive is important too. We have to respect all of life. And if we don't, it's going to come back and kick us in a bad way. And it has. So that is sort of a long-winded answer to why I have not chosen to just become a vegetarian and why I have chosen to actually eat meat, which requires the killing of animals. Um, there's no ethical distinction there for me um, when it comes to eating. I'm not a vegan. I don't embrace the vegan perspective that uh, eating vegetables is more ethical than eating animal by byproducts or actually eating animals. That's it, vegan banana. There's your answer. Uh, I know that will not be satisfactory for you or for any other vegans, and that's fine. Um, you know, it's interesting, like, here I'm not a vegan, and yet I'm, for the most part, I eat and behave very vegan. Um, at work, I'm actually, I, I, <laughs> I promote the vegan diet. I'm telling the guys at work that they're eating way too much meat that they've got to cut down and try, you know, hey, try going without meat for a few months and see what it's like, or go a week without eating. And it's like, for them, it's unthinkable. But I'm, you know, yeah, I'm, a, I'm an oddball in that way because I'm not a vegan and I'm promoting veganism. So it's kind of weird. But, and the fact that I love eating plants, I, you know, the way if you prepare plant dinners, I'm sorry, they're far tastier than um, meat centered dinners. I, I mean, I feel anyways, like a, a really well prepared plant based dinner can be pretty damn awesome if you know what I'm talking about. Which um, I'm about to get ready and head off to the uh, vegan, what is it, the vegan festival? Let me just check here. It's out in, um, you know, what is it? Uh, Oh, where is it? Vegan Food and Drink Festival, yeah, at Fort York here in Toronto. So if you're in the Toronto area, you should check it out. It's a good time. Um, yeah, so that's about it. Uh, what else do I have to say? I don't know. Life is a blast. I'm enjoying life and all its challenges. And now I'm just rambling on because I think it's time to close this video and say goodbye. I will be back hopefully sooner rather than later. Take care and have a wonderful day.